Hey, everybody. Welcome to Kame House Party, uh, but the new edition of Kame House Party on Strike. Uh, That's right. I'm Vince. I'm Aaron. And we, we interrupt your regularly scheduled Dragon Ball Watch Along podcast to adhere to the SAG AFTRA guidelines on promotion. And we've got supplemental content coming to you during this prolonged break. And the first piece of new content is something we like to call <coughs> the Manga Reader's Digest. Ah, yes. Enjoy the soft sounds of a gentleman's whisper as the boys <laughs> begin Ooh. to discuss manga, both we, is big it getting steamy? and small. What? Is he getting steamy already? A, gen <laughs> a, a man's gentle whisper. <laughs> <laughs> well, how else would you call a, a gentleman whisper? It's a gentle a, whisper. A gentleman's, mm -hmm, I get, you got me there. Mm-hmm. A gentleman's and whisper. There we go. There I we get go. It. Um, and look, we've got this is this is a first for us. So bear with us as we go through this process, because uh, we, we wanted to talk about something. And uh, I think I suggested we do some we talk about some manga because I've been reading some interesting stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. The first uh, item that we're going to be discussing discussing. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of this Manga Reader's Digest is The Hunter's Guild Red Hood by Yuki Kawaguchi. A grim take on grim tales. The hunted Ooh. become the hunters is the tagline for, for this uh, manga. I, Aaron, I didn't do any research on the mangaka Yuki Kawaguchi. We can keep that aspect of the show where we just yeah. run in blind and not know anything about anything. Sure. Things, things that you should know about this as, as a viewer is that one, uh, we're going to spoil the heck out of this thing. Um, yeah. Two, it's a canceled series. <laughs> not, it, not in the bad way, but in the, uh, in the bad way of like, oh man, no, no more chapters. Dang. Yeah. Um, it, it got it got three volumes, uh, probably soon to be rare collector's items. I think this dropped in 2021. I remember reading it during the pandemic when um, I ran out of my hero to catch up on, like that first round of team up missions. Um, everything that's been in the anime up until this point, I think I had read in 2021. Uh, and then I supplemented this with some others, some other manga that that we will hopefully talk about in the coming weeks. But today's focus is on the Hunter's Guild Red Hood. Uh, let's you, let's you, start talking about it. OK, do you want to do you want to summarize kind of what it is? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Shall I? Uh, I mean, it's in the tagline. You know, the grim fairy tales. Um, this is yeah. a this is a manga set in a world where those fairy tales exist but everything's like a bit askew follows a young boy velo and his quest to rid the world of the werewolf scourge the lycanthropy plaguing his hamlet and the, and the entire world um to do so he teams up with a hunter grim of the hundred cannons someone cursed by a witch um and they go on a, a little adventure. I can't say adventures because I think there's probably only three arcs in that get covered in these 18 chapters. I guess. Yeah. They're one of them's very long. Yes. One they're of like them good. is like uh, 11 chapters long. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this was it. It, I like this kind of world. I like this kind of fantasy where it's a little more of a dark, more gothy fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, we're not dealing with elves and dwarves. Uh, we're dealing with werewolves. 
Um, people have guns. Yeah, if, people if, got- you're, if, if your fantasy has guns in it, I am on board. Yeah, and not just like blunderbusses, which, hold on, let me zoom in here. You can kind of see. Enhance. Where are we, Vincent? Where are we enhancing? I, I'm trying what? to enhance upward. What do you think blunderbuss means? <laughs> For the listening audience, Vince was zooming in on breast. <laughs> Inadvertently. Inadvertently. I, I was trying to get cannons in the shot. <laughs> but... um yeah, the the world has has guns, it has magic, it has curses, it has witches, it has a Cinderella, it has magic potions. It's got everything you kind of want in that like it would you call it it's it's straight up fantasy. It's not high fantasy, right? High fantasy would be like your Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. This is I mean, maybe it's just cuz I've been maybe I dug it because I've been playing Diablo 4 still. And this is very much in the vein of a Diablo where my minus the Christian devil. Right. <laughs> um minus, minus our Christian Lord and Savior. <laughs> yeah, my minus Christ. Unless he, I don't know. I'm sure if this went on, they'd have to fight him. Absolutely. Oh my god. He's I would love to see Velo fight werewolf Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Drink of my blood. Get swallowed into my gaping maw. <laughs> For your sins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of the premise. That's sort of the baseline. Are we just, I, I see you have the whole thing up. I have the whole thing up are, so we can we just, just talk about like some of, some of the imagery I'm uh, cool to flip through some pages yeah. and kind of talk about different things. Um, so, like, I think the these manga ch- these manga episodes might be more conducive to. Um, uh, if you watch it on YouTube, <laughs> I'll go ahead and say that. The coming house party on YouTube. Just look her up. You'll f- you'll find it. I think the links yeah. in the show notes. We'll try to be as descriptive as possible, but definitely check out the YouTube to get the full sense of what we're reading. Also, I believe these chapters may be free on the Shonen Jump app. So if you don't feel like paying for the Shonen Jump app, I don't think you have to at this point. For these, I, yeah, they usually do like either the first few or the last few or both. That's mm-hmm. free. So yeah, you can, you can give it a shot. Oops. But uh, let's you can take a look in a book. There we go. It's manga Reader's Digest. It's manga Reader's Digest. So mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I think each of the volumes starts with a nice colorized like splash page. That's really neat. Uh, I think I'm. Is this skipping? Yeah, it's skipping the third one. Ooh. There it is. There it is. So, have you ever seen a dragon boy? This is uh, Grim talking to Velo. You haven't because we exterminated all of them 500 years ago, bitch. That's our, yeah, our little hook. <laughs> yeah. That hunter, hunters, we killed all the dragons. Which kind of, I'm just like, really? All of them? It's hard to years imagine. Ago. I could <laughs> now I want to say I did things 500 years ago. <laughs> I paid my tax, Mr. IRS. I paid my taxes over 500 years ago. Mm-hmm. I think my people have uh, paid their taxes. Probably. Mm-hmm, 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 It'd be mm-hmm, pretty mm-hmm. cool if uh, someone um, gave us some reparations for all of that, especially when would be cool. certain states are trying to eradicate the history. But the history of this manga is told a lot in these really cool scrolls. It it's got it's got a wonderful sense of like magical whimsy. It's all very storytelling. It, it feels like feels like it could have existed in just you know a tale told at a campfire somewhere in the woods mm-hmm. about werewolves and and hunters. Like it's pretty simple. Um, 
I do like, yeah, the, the word, some of the text treatment is very good. It kind of deteriorates a little bit as we go on. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in this first chapter we have, we were introduced to Velo. Oh, like some of the, the text here where uh, yeah. the caption boxes are sur just surrounded by a bunch of magical, bunch of like sort of fantasy, fantasy tchotchkes. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of just, you know, straight black lines. And different uh, characters are given, I think, different weighted uh, text. Like, I think a lot of what Grimm says gets weighted heavily mm -hmm. because she is a very important character, because she has important things to tell Velo. Um, and, and it's got, everything plays really nicely visually. I, the panel work is pretty good. Uh, and interesting, I think I think it does at times lack fluidity, but yes, I, I don't I don't think that's necessarily due to lack of skill. I think it's more of a choice. Um, like if you compare it to uh, what else have I been reading? Like even Candy Flurry, when we were both reading that, that had a lot of really nice kinetic frames that tied action together really well. Mm -hmm. The same way that. Uh, and I say this for the most part, like Jujutsu Kaisen does it really well. Um, when it gets to really dynamic action sequences and you can, you can see where Mappa draws from that um, in, in the most recent uh, season. And similarly, when my hero academia gets to moving, when smashes are happening and powers are, are at their full tilt, like it jumps off the page in a way that this doesn't always. Um. Yeah, there is a, that, that's my biggest complaint, I think, with it, uh, is that a lot of the action, the storytelling isn't quite there, where like these individual frames look really great when we get to the action parts. But as a, like, as a page and as a story, visually, it doesn't always work. Um, yeah. Like, I think we saw so right before we're at this at this page right now, it's we're introduced to Grimm. Everyone Vela's little hamlet, his village, a bunch of people died from werewolves. The mayor, he he's like, okay, we're gonna get the hunters guild. They're mo they're professional monster hunters. They're like, we're gonna get a really good one. It ends up being Grimm, who is a little kid. Um, but they that they're gonna hunt werewolves anyway. Uh, so Velo and Grimm go off to, to go search for him. Uh, if you go back to where we first see the werewolf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or forward. Just the werewolf designs are very cool because they don't look like werewolf. Yeah, and, and they capture this first one basically mid-transformation from this old woman who's been hiding in the hamlet as a werewolf. And like I, I said, gaping maw before, because that's what they are. They are just weird, flesh rending, creepy monsters that can talk and think and have emotions, uh, which makes them really creepy. And uh, like exactly the great kind of, I think, enemy uh, for the Hunter's Guild, right? They say like like lycanthropy like is uh, every human has the ability to turn into a werewolf. It's not always just like uh, sometimes people do it by choice. Sometimes people do it out of necessity or they get attacked and become one on their own and transform that way. But like fully transformed, this old lady is this derpy faced <laughs> dog faced werewolf with two jaws on the bottom and six arms ears that look like they're out of a Dr. Seuss, uh, book. Yes. Like, and I, I, I really love that all the word bubbles for the werewolves are jagged and, and, um, <clears throat> and, and not, not solid. And, and like, they're hard to, to decipher for the people in the scene. And for us to the 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 reader, <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, they they they're dark soulsy. These werewolves, for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but also also being fuzzy, which I don't think Dark Souls has a lot of fuzzy enemies. Bloodborne does. Bloodborne has some fuzzy okay. enemies. So I could see Bloodborne being an inspiration from this then. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But like, I think as an example, like from this scene uh, to this one, is it skipping? Yeah, it's skipping. There we go. Like this might, this might be one of the better examples of how they do make the action flow. Like this entire first werewolf arc, I'd mm -hmm. say the action flows really nicely. I think it's also because it's uh, contained into like two protagonists and one villain. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not a fan of the, like they do flashbacks for the characters and it's just the panels that we've seen before, which is, which is fine. <laughs> Um, but it's not very stylized until the end. Like a lot of them are just panels with all the words in them, which makes this a little cluttered to read. Um, like a, that, as you're, as you're first going through it, but that could be a, like a uh, last minute decision with that panel. Mm -hmm. Cause the, cause the panel kind of, when Velo is thinking about the mayor, it's just a black space. And he just says he's dead. That could work by itself. Honestly, it's kind of a cool. It would. It probably would have been better if we didn't see this goofy ass panel of the mayor. This, this big as he's grin grinning. and his and his coon skin cap and and all of that. Because just the black space of the panel, like the size of it, definitely shows. Like, oh, this is a this is a bit of a. Here's a moment to like think. Like, yep. Here, you can mourn your friend, but then we mm -hmm. move right into the action. I don't know this uh, Magica personally, but the they have a type of of um, a figure that they're into mm -hmm. for all the female characters. I'd say, <laughs> at least the prominent ones that we meet. Yeah. Grim, yeah, Grim has turned into an adult woman to fight this werewolf. We'll find out why later. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, this this werewolf just got a <laughs> I forgot about that weird gulp panel. Yeah, I think onomatopoeia in this manga mm -hmm. is great. Like all like the little like whooshes that are like there's a little nom in here. Like all these little tiny things do speak to like I can hear the sound design is if this was to be animated. It's just like this big like. Mm -hmm. Ugh. you know like that's what i'm envisioning and what i'm hearing yeah and then i mean just the sh just the shape of the werewolf how it kind of goes it, it there's a lot of squash and stretch happening yeah and like elongated i think that's it's a good werewolf design because it's something we haven't seen where it's uh yeah long is something that's too long longer than it should be is scary. Yeah. And then just more cross hatching and squiggles as the action picks up. Yeah, th this, I don't know if this is like the height of, like it can't be. There's some, there's some cool, there's some equally cool stuff in, in the rest of the manga, but mm -hmm. like this opening really hooked me. I, how did you feel? Cause this, the, to, to set the stage, uh, in a way that I should have in the beginning. I've actually read, this is the second time reading through this. This is your first time. Um, well, I know why you like it, because uh, it may be similar to a, another title with the word hunter in it. Yeah, uh, yeah the, maybe a little bit. The word hunter in it twice, in uh -huh, fact. Uh -huh. An X um, in the middle, you say? Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I like I said, I like I like the world building of it um and i'm pretty in this first chapter and i and i know shonen jump when it's a new chapter they usually go for double size on it mm -hmm. and then of course walking away from an explosion very cool. without looking no it's cool it had a lot of good twist and well a lot of good uh surprises 
and enough goofiness on top of like kind of the the seriousness of it. Um, but yeah, I just like really the world is what got me into it. Of like here's a fantasy world that's like that's not high fantasy. Yeah, but I did I then, dig this look like stained glass depiction of werewolves and where they mm-hmm. come from and how they take shape and form. Survive on one food alone, human flesh. So we get into some werewolf backstory. Um, she's like, okay, you have to be a hunter. And he's like, no. <laughs> yeah. The refusal of the call to action, mm-hmm. right? Every hero's journey has it. It does. Fellow wants to just take up the mayor's mantle. He's like, look, lady. I I know what these hunters are all about. You're all about money. You don't care about people. I want to be like the mayor, protect the people I care about, my family who protected me when werewolves took my own family. (laughs) And then what an angle. (laughs) But if you if you direct your attention to the top right panel, the first panel, I I love I do like um Grimm's reaction shots because she's nonplussed by a lot of things, but they, they always find a new way to make her nonplussed. Mm-hmm. Like just her hood with her eyes beaming out of what I'm assuming would be a black space, but instead it's white. Mm-hmm. She's the blankest expression. Um and yeah, you you made a uh, mention that like yeah if you like hunter hunter if you like that anime and manga series you will like this it it draws a lot of inspiration from mm-hmm. the world building uh, of hunter hunter um what? and in hunter hunter yeah what are they hunting <laughs> it's just a job right it, it, they're basically just bounty hunters Okay. And once you get a hunter's license, you can hunt other hunters. And you get you get put into the hunter's guild. Mm-hmm. There's there's a guild in this too. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Um, a hunter's guild, if you will. Mm-hmm. A hunter's guild, if you will. And yeah, it, it shares a lot of similarities in that like the training sequence in this is not only uh long and arduous but it is a journey in and of itself there's tests that are that are bestowed upon our 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 hero and heroes and heroines also looking to join the hunters guild um but look i think we can agree that the strongest design philosophy is in these werewolves these mm-hmm. two werewolves in particular Look, Naroya and Doduo. Big guy, <laughs> little guy. Classic comedic duo. In in inside of us there are two werewolves. Mm-hmm. A Doduo and a Naroya. Naroya? And A R A O I A. I like I like all the names in this too. Mm-hmm. Um because I don't think we're gonna scroll through all of these. I'll just give you some names of characters uh that I wrote down in my notes. Uh, Bonkers, Bremen, mm-hmm. Mariop- Mariopios, uh, Magella Gaiga, Nuo Zhao, Portion, Tilty, <laughs> Milty, Debonair. Yeah. The Ashen Witch Cinderella. Um, I don't want to say one name because it, yeah, it's a big fine. spoiler. Um, <clears throat> which, if we get into Jesus spoiler Christ. country, we'll let you know. <laughs> That's yes. what is that? Jesus Christopheles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a shame we won't get to Debonair. Yeah. Uh, but look, if you if you like Grimm's design, you gotta love Debonair. <laughs> <laughs> She's hot we, both we, literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah, look at uh, look at the. Look at this long asshole <laughs> of mm-hmm. a werewolf. It, what it, uh, so for the audience that's only listening, if you remember the ghost dog, 
uh, from well, yes, the Nightmare great Before pull. Christmas or the Sandworms from a Beetlejuice. These are Tim Burton looking long, stretchy werewolves. I am nodding so emphatically mm. for the listening audience I was, that I was my chair is rocking and you better come a knock it. <laughs> I was trying to put my finger on it. Not your chair, but this design. I'm like, this is reminding me so hard of something. And I finally, after a day, I finally unlocked it. Yeah. And after two readings, I couldn't pull that. These little, these, these long freaks with little tufts of ears. Little tufts of fur on their nose. That's not how noses work. Brandy canine. And then, um, yeah, the other one is just a big round blob. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Cries a lot. The most Muppet of all the designs. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, this panel that we're showing right now, they are hugging and like celebrating that they are going to have the Hamlet all to themselves. And they're like melding into one another in a way that like I, upon reading this, I was like, are they one thing? Are they two things? Mm -hmm. Are they conjoined or are they not? But this is like our first werewolf arc. Um, <laughs> these two decide to attack the Hamlet. It, it, oh God, look at, look at this. Look at this. His fangs out. He's got that, he's got the, <laughs> he's got the Sarlacc mouth. Oh. The, Sar, the Sarlussy, as some kids say. It's gross. He's got like a little poofy tail. <laughs> <laughs> like none of these mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. align. He's got these long, spindly arms and that, chasing that's down cool. some sheep. If you're making monsters, if you're doing horror things, don't say like, I don't know, I guess it's a big lizard. No, mm-hmm. put dumb things on top of other things that shouldn't go together. Put them yeah. in the wrong spots. Look. Look at him. Look, he's just He's eating not, those sheep like popcorn uh, shrimp. <laughs> Oh, the little sheep are buying. Yeah, th- I, see, that's it. Like, I noticed a lot of those little things uh, upon a second read. All the sheep are buying as they fall. Um, there's kangs because the bell is being rung incessantly. And I don't think those kangs stop. Unless Nor do they the conquer. Army of kangs. Nor are they quantumaniad. Oh, nice. And then the the greatest trick of all, the skinny werewolf. He's turned into he used his human form to turn into the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'll eat some humans. Yes. What's wrong, bats? <laughs> Scared of the big bad wolf? Oh! I thought you were a little too old for Fairy tales. <laughs> Do you want to know how I got these, this wet nose and waggly tail? Uh. So as the, oh. as the werewolves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as the werewolves Andy. descend on the Hamlet, uh, Grimm is like, all right. That's enough gallivanting and 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 whatnot. She takes the the bell from the clock tower or the bell tower and quite and wangs our our wolf on the head with it. It's a it's a wonderful panel. It it mm-hmm. I'm I'm not doing it justice here, but it, it's real good it, in full in full. It, it's it's pretty rad. Get and nothing like scenes. a kid with a double barreled shotgun. Mm-hmm. As big as they are. Mm-hmm. So in the bottom two panels, in the right one, which would be the first one, on the far left you see the werewolf snoot, and then when you go to the next panel, he's human formed up. That's just a nice little storytelling thing, which yeah. is even though we know <laughs> who the werewolf is. And these are the only big ones outside. They're in these people cells out. It's cool. And again, I, I like all the little like glance, 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 mm-hmm. and the the little onomatopoeias to go with it. I wonder what that translates to in, in Japanese. If it if the noise is even more uh, fitting. 
But he, he even can't. gets a peek in the top left. I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. The, hold on. The sound an eye makes when it peaks. Hold on. Is that it? <laughs> That's what that's what happens when I wink. That's why I wasn't very successful as a single man. <laughs> Just your eyes are too viscous mm-hmm. to flirt. That's that's why I wear glasses now. I had some I had some thick ass contacts. <laughs> Yeah, mine just made a scraping sound whenever I blinked. Ugh. What a horrible, what a horrible time there was to not want to wear glasses for a while. Because I remember like a, contacts used to be hard, hard contact lenses used to put in the eye. Not for me, I, but my mom and my dad, they had those kind of contacts. My older siblings and dad also had the, the hard glass contact if you don't clean it right you're gonna get infected they're as expensive as glasses Mm -hmm. now you get them on the daily we throw them away we we encourage each other to throw them away yes we live in blessed times don't we (laughs) a single use eye repairing lens (laughs) Droll. They're, they're they're slick as hell. <laughs> no, no, they do dry my eyes out. I kind of they they always sometimes. will. They haven't gotten it. Like you wear contacts, your eyes are going to get dry at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. That's why I carry. I can't promote that. They don't pay us. <laughs> <laughs> I promote saline solution, salt water, baby. Put it in your mm-hmm. eyes. Yeah, hypoallergenic. Mm hmm. Uh, there's a few panels in this where Grimm is like, all right, look, you said you wanted to protect the Hamlet. Here's your chance. Show me what you can do, kiddo. And so we, we learn that throughout this, they are they had a plan. Velo and um, <clears throat> Velo and Grimm. Oh, a little too far. I think the third chapter will wrap up this little arc, this little Maybe. battle. Let's find out. Let's find out, shall we? Um, no, because it it does not. He just get. He just. Look, oh yeah. He if get, you he think this big. is this werewolf's final form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 absolute fool. <laughs> you dummy. What are you, some sort of baka? Mm-hmm. Well, we know who's not a Baca, and that's Velo. He he is a keen observer. Uh, that is his strength, his strategy, his mind. Uh, he's also a little tough cookie, but where he shines is, is in caring and in um, in strategizing on how to defeat monsters. So this is this is a bit of a flashback to them mm-hmm. making plans. Um, I think in the chapter before, we saw that the werewolves were like, "Oh, there are two hunters. Oh, they don't notice us. This is perfect." And then the beginning of this chapter, Grim is like, "Hey, there are two werewolves. Act like you don't notice them." Mm-hmm. How did you feel about the gun being called the Chekhov series? <laughs> um. It makes more sense when you read the whole manga. Yeah. But I didn't really think about it. I just, I should have, I should have clocked it immediately. Much like the Mm -hmm. clock on her thigh. Um, But. Oh. (laughs) Quick, what time is it? I need to know. (laughs) Right now. Ma'am, I need, I need to know what time it is. Please. (laughs) (laughs) A werewolf? No. <laughs> Thirsty. Just a thirst wolf. Sorry, Velo. He's not a werewolf. He's just down bad. <laughs> when those when those moons are full, <laughs> I turn <laughs> into a thirst wolf. Oh my gosh. Here's a here's another great transformation sequence. Like this, the mm-hmm. right side of this panel uh is is so good. Well, Batman, you think you hold on? You got me. 
I'm a werewolf, so now what? You think you got me cornered, bats? It's not cool, but I'll retreat. You hear that? A temporary retreat. Grrr. And then he turns into his again, face turns half werewolf. I'm a gonna go. <laughs> and then come back again later. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's what he says. Yeah. But uh the, the speech bubbles deteriorate in form mm-hmm. the same way that he transforms. And then we get the the other half of the panel where he is in his werewolf form, towering over Tiny Velo. Going to attack. Werewolf superiority. Yeah. Oh, I do think this is where we learn about a very special metal. Oh, that's right. I think so. So let's get to it. Gwaf! Oh, and this this sequence sucked. I didn't like this. But oh, but yeah. it adds to the darkness in which you you enjoy. And I think is is yeah. one of the things that I that this manga I think misses the mark on in the following chapters, you know, until you get to the very end. But even that, it's it's such a high concept kind of deal that I'm sure it, it felt like uh, that that the sequence at the end in chapter 18 was definitely supposed to be like at the end of maybe six or seven volumes of adventures or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the, the werewolf, the skinny werewolf kills the big werewolf for being useless. Um, ripping out his teeth, crushing his arms. Like and finally, uh, bashing his head in with a boulder. Like a certain biblical brother team. Oh my gosh. Thank you for bringing Christ back. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cain he and Abel, right? Yet. Cain, yeah. Yeah, the we're talking murderer. Old Testament, baby. Mm-hmm. The first murderer. Put him in what? a hole. Someone's done a true crime parody of Cain and Abel, right? They had, to, it has to exist. Absolutely. There's wow. probably at least one episode of like CSI or SVU that is a Cain and Abel parody. But yeah, it, it, the, the darkness that we see is the, the older or the skinny werewolf kills the, the big dumb one by ripping out his heart. And, it's and like, then oh, the yeah, final form the, is shown. Because werewolves can regenerate, so you have to kill the heart. The heart, Norman. <laughs> but look, look at this big lug. He we, looks great. He, He's got two tongues now. He, he figured out that, like, so strength is muscle growth. Mu- muscle growth is when you rip those muscles apart doing workouts. They grow back bigger and stronger. So he just scratches mm-hmm. himself up. And then with his werewolf regeneration, he gets swole. He's a swole wolf. He's a swole a were- wolf. A were swole? No. Uh, a were gym. <laughs> uh, le- lif- lifcanthropy. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I suffer from lifcanth- lifcanthropy. <laughs> Every full moon, I howl at the gym and do creatine powder. Mm-hmm. But Aaron, <laughs> I, I don't know. Do you feel like we may have um, talked about this enough? We've gotten through the first three chapters. Oh, yes. Uh, another fun element of this is, that, that doesn't pay off throughout the, the, the short run series is like there are hunter tools uh, that are either magic or from within the world that they live in, like these gas shells, uh, these naturally occurring clams that emit a flammable gas that also blinds and nullifies a werewolf sense of smell. Yeah, Grim pulls out these little gadgets every now and again. 
Uh, we don't get a. I do have to mention Wolfonium is what it's called because I don't think we're going to get to it. That's yeah. the one thing is that it's not silver bullets because they're like, well, silver's too squishy. Mm-hmm. It's not going to go through you. I'm like, I don't know, man. If you shoot it fast enough, it'll go through. <laughs> Velocity plus weight equals pre- penetration. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> And gentlemen, mm-hmm. <laughs> penetrations, not just for one of the fair sexes. <laughs> it's for all of I God's, uh, <laughs> all of God's uh, pantheon of pronouns. He, she's, they's, them's, everybody's getting it. Uh, everyone needs that formula in the back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're, the guild comes up with its own metal called Wolfonium <laughs> that has all the properties of silver, but it's extremely heavy. Exactly. And the, the way she explains it, the werewolf and Grimm go into like this like two-page classroom scene. Yeah, like I think both, I think it goes both ways. The werewolf tells too much about how werewolves work. Grimm says too much about how uh, the Hunter's Guild works. Because they each think they're going to kill each other. You know, that kind of thing. Um, But, yeah. I think overall, I would definitely recommend a read-through of of this. It's short enough. You can get through it pretty easily. Um, It's fun. Maybe take another look at the Magica's other works if you're interested in this. If you're also interested in this, just start reading Hunter x Hunter. Um, <laughs> this oh uh, this is the least buck wild that this book gets <laughs> yes this is where everything starts like i will say a highlight for me that we're that we're not going to get to is um <laughs> they, they are traveling on the beach but there's a larger crab that shows up it's got a tank on it and they're like oh look everybody chill it's just a big crab uh, relax. It's fine. Um, and they go. Well, yeah, it's not shooting at us, so we should be fine. And then the tank, uh, cannon slowly turns at at the crew and blows up their crab. And they're like, "Who's piloting it?" And another smaller crab peeks his little head, brain, mm-hmm. head out <laughs> of inside the tank on top of the giant crab. It's it's fun. They travel. They travel by crab. Like what? I don't know what else you want. Mm-hmm. Giant trees walking into the ocean <laughs> in the background. They in the it's one background. page. Yeah, in one page. There's like so many fun ideas about this world um, that unfortunately don't get to be fully explored. But uh, uh, we, do you have anything else? I was gonna say we get to fully ignore. <laughs> Yeah, because it it's it's gone. There's no more. Um, oh God, I hit my knee really hard on my desk. Uh-oh. So we should probably get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Before you but turn thank into a you. knee wolf, I turned into a my my wear knees. <laughs> They're changing to that of an old man's. No, no, the dust. <laughs> my. Precious cartilage. I have to play hoops with a knee brace. Uh, that's been me since I was like <laughs> 19. Oh, wow. <laughs> Various forms of knee bracery, either a sleeve, um, one of those classic, like really tight sleeves with a hole in the knee. I've, I've done it all. But. Aaron, we've read it all. We encourage you all to read it all, Mm -hmm. Uh, which is probably the tagline for Manga Reader's Digest is read it all. There we go. I found it. There you go. Read it all. Yeah. Is it read it all or read it now? Oh, is it a read it all or read it now? I'm I'm going to say for the for the twists and turns in these 18 chapters. And I'll say the twists are front loaded in the beginning chapter and the ending three chapters. 
uh, the stuff in the middle is fun. Um, it goes on for a long time, but yeah, I'd say read it all. Read all 18 chapters. How about you? Yeah, read it all. It, it took me just a few hours to read. Um, you can <laughs> you can see the exact moment he knew he was getting canceled. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty stark. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We're not talking about Tony. Mm hmm. Uh, but we, but we are finishing our conversation about manga. Um, so thank you for listening and bearing with us as we line up various forms of programming to supplement the watch along podcast that we are so known for during this strike because Mm -hmm. up with union power and down with corporations. Let's stick it to them folks. Yeah. That, that man needs a good sticking to. Yeah. And uh, Aaron, I'm going to stick to you like glue. Oh, I'm going to. Yep, I'm sticky. (laughs) And and on that note, it's (laughs) it's time we close the book Mm -hmm. on this week's adventures in Manga Reader's Digest from right to left. You know, Frosty the Snowman, it's truly the most quintessential Christmas song. It introduces a beloved figure who invites the children to come to him, gets into an altercation with state authorities. Right, the hollering stop. And then he dies, but promises to be back again one day. Frosty is a Christ figure. Hi, I'm Juliet. And I'm Catherine. And we're I'll Be Pod for Christmas, a seasonal podcast where we overanalyze Christmas pop songs and movies and put them into conversation with some unlikely pieces of literature. Don't be a Grinch. Join us on I'll Be Pod for Christmas on the Moonshot Podcast Network. <laughs>